Some breaking news right now on Denver 7 News at 6 a.m. A tragic situation mm -hmm. shaking up a Denver neighborhood overnight. Now, three people, including a young boy, were killed. They were shot inside a home in northeast Denver. There is still a crime scene out there this morning as police search for the suspect. So we want to get out for to Christian Lopez there at the scene at the apartment complex where this happened, Christian. It's a very tragic morning in this neighborhood as families are waking up and getting ready for school and work and they're hearing of this news. We did see police on the scene this morning, but they just left a little while ago. They responded to this apartment complex around six last night and they found that three people had been shot inside their apartment. This was a young child, a woman and a man. Police say that they are still working to find the suspects. We are also still working to find out that child's age. The victims were found inside an apartment here at the East Range Crossings apartment complex and officials are still working to gather evidence, interview witnesses and try to find the suspect or suspects responsible for the shooting. We will continue to follow this and bring you the latest as we continue to learn more this morning. Live in Denver, I'm Christian Lopez, Denver 7. Also want to let you know about another scene. A woman is in the hospital after a shooting in unincorporated Adams County. This is a live look at where it happened on Princeton Street off Highway 285. That scene has mostly been cleared, but you can see the crime tape. We'll bring you any details we learn of as they come into our newsroom. We're also working to learn more after Evans police shot and killed a suspect. The city of Greeley says officers were called out to a home near 37th Street and Palermo yesterday because of a suspicious person. That person was armed and refused to follow police commands. Initially, police used less lethal munitions, but then an officer shot the person and they later died at the hospital. It's not clear why that use of force escalated right now. Police have not identified the suspect. Switching gears now, let's give you some uh, better news here to start your day. The live look from our Lookout Mountain camera shows some blue skies and a nice sunrise already to start our Wednesday. But it's been so dry. <laughs> April, uh, Lisa, we haven't had any snow really. I mean, down here, barely, barely just a little there. Uh, Denver Post reporting driest in 59 years. Yeah, a trace of snow recorded trace, out at the airport. Okay. That adds up to one one hundredth of an inch of precipitation. That's nothing. Yeah, it, normally here in April we see about 8.8 .8 inches, just under 9 inches of snow officially out at the airport. We're going to get a few showers today. Very little rain expected. I'll show you that here in just a minute. But yeah, you're right. It has been dry and you saw from that shot there. We do have a little bit of high cloud cover out there this morning. We'll be under a partly sunny sky today and those temperatures are going to warm. In fact, right now starting off in the 40s and even some 50s in some neighborhoods, 50 degrees in Denver right now. Winds are west at about 10 to 12 miles per hour. It's been nice that it's been calmer, which has been good. That's kept our fire danger down a bit, but today is still going to be warm, low to mid 70s with a few spotty showers rolling off the foothills by early afternoon. We'll talk more about that coming up here in just a few minutes. Boulder 72, Highlands Ranch 75. Tomorrow's going to be even warmer and drier. I'll show you that plus when we have a better chance of maybe seeing a little bit of rain and maybe even a little bit of snow in spots, Jason, this weekend. We have two major problems. One is on I-70, and right now I'm not seeing any traffic moving on I-70 on the westbound side going after the tunnel over to I-25. We'll take a look at that in just a second. Air Tracker 7 is over this situation on I-76, where it's closed down right here at Highway 85, trying to get to 96th Avenue. From Air Tracker 7, you can actually see this car that came off of the roadway, and it's uh, significantly damaged. I do not have any information about the how many people were in the car or how badly they they were hurt here, but obviously with this investigation going on, as you take a look at the map, that section is closed down. So those folks are going up to 104, turning around and coming back or going to Brighton Road to come back. It'd be a lot faster to use Highway 2 coming off 120 at Sable and then get back to 96th Avenue because it's already a half an hour delay in there right now. The other trouble spot, let me take you to I-70. As you look at I-70, this is the westbound side. There should be traffic rolling through here and you see nothing moving past the tunnel. There was a crash here earlier. It looks like they might be doing the last of the sweeping getting lanes open here maybe just a minute the eastbound side is also backed up with a crash so we have big problems on i-70 i'll keep posted on this stuff that's all going on right now here this morning Thank you, Jason. Well, this morning there are multiple investigations underway after a suspicious house fire in Castle Rock. One person was found dead in the home and another is in the hospital this morning. Denver 7's Veronica Acosta joins us live from Castle Rock and Veronica investigators call it suspicious, but neighbors in this quiet neighborhood don't know what to think. 
Sirens, helicopters, the neighbors in this area, they heard it all yesterday when this house fire started. You can see what's left behind here. The caution tape around the home. You can even see the marks of the fire out of one of those windows here off the side of the home. Some of those neighbors did come out of their homes immediately to see what was happening yesterday. Others, as you can imagine, they were texting each other back and forth, trying to figure out what was going on. When they eventually did come outside, they saw this. Take a look at this video. Castle Rock police say one person did die in the fire. They're calling that death suspicious. A separate person was taken to the hospital with non-life threatening injuries. Several dogs also rescued from the home. Neighbors told us they'd never seen anything like this in this neighborhood. They were truly shocked. Everybody knows everybody. Um, I know some of the people that live on this block. Um, and so we want to make sure everyone's safe. And Castle Rock police say they are not only investigating that death, but they are also investigating the fire and how it started. Right now they say there's no threat to the public. We're live in Castle Rock this morning. I'm Veronica Acosta, Denver 7. Thank you, Veronica. A new report finds almost all of the homeowners impacted by the Marshall Fire were underinsured. The Colorado Division of Insurance says only 8% of the homeowners who lost their homes had full replacement insurance coverage. That just is 76 of the 951 homes deemed total losses. The Division of Insurance will hold a town hall on May 16th to talk to homeowners about the next steps in the process for those who are underinsured. The investigation into the uh, fire that broke out in Monta Vista, Colorado, is expected to take several more weeks. Six families were displaced by that wind-driven fire last week. Fifteen buildings, including some houses and outbuildings, were damaged or destroyed. Investigators do not believe the fire was intentionally set. Well, it is hard to forget these images from last summer. A massive mudslide spilling onto I-70 through Glenwood Canyon. It caused major detours around the interstate for weeks. Uh, well, now CDOT is putting into place proactive measures if something like this should happen again. It includes constructing new bathtub-like features along the side of the road. It's basically you dig a hole before the road or a culvert, so it allows the debris to come down. Because the main thing with these debris flows, it's not just water. It's a whole lot of mud mixed in, rocks, trees, all the stuff that plugs the culvert. Yeah, CDOT says more than $20 million have already been spent to reopen I-70 along with the ongoing engineering contracts. The majority of that cost has been paid for by the Federal Highway Administration. We have comprehensive 360 in-depth coverage on how prepared our state is for future wildfires right now on the DenverChannel.com. It is do or die for the Nuggets. The team is back in San Francisco tonight for game five against the Warriors. Yeah, now or never. Mm -hmm. uh, if they lose, it is over tonight. But the team has come back from being down three games to one twice in the playoffs. It was two years ago they won their series wow. over the Jazz and the Clippers. And the Nuggets have beaten the Warriors twice at the Chase Center during the regular season this year. So we know it can be done. And if they win, it comes back to Ball Arena for okay. Game 6. So tip-off tonight is at 8 p.m. Lisa. I don't know if I can watch. I don't know <laughs> if I can. I'll be too nervous. Now it's just about 6.09. It's going to be a beautiful day today. We do have a little high cloud cover rolling in. A mild start, though, at the bus stop. Your kids could get away with just a light sweatshirt. We're going to be, again, some T-shirt and shorts weather this afternoon. By the time they get home, right around 70. We may see a spotty shower or two. It's about a 20% chance. I'll show you that coming up here in just a few minutes. And where we may see a little severe weather today, Jason, in just a few. And just a few minutes ago, I told you about I-70 and how it was being held right there at the tunnel trying to get to I-25. All lanes on the westbound side are now open, but the eastbound side, we still have some flashing lights in here trying to get past the Purina plant. So still some pretty big delays. We'll take a look at the travel times here as well as the issue up on I-76 coming out of Brighton and why that's still closed at Highway 85. You'll have more options to travel this summer. The airline adding more international destinations, including from Denver. Plus, before you woke up this morning, a historic space launch. Freedom soars and the dragon flies for it. There goes uh, carrying a Colorado astronaut making history as she heads to the ISS.